Life is not perfect and neither are we. Welcome to Raw and Unhinged. Lara and Steph will be bringing you real and insightful chats on health, psychology, fitness and nutrition. Lara is a qualified nutritionist and fitness enthusiast who loves her pizza and Steph, a registered psychologist, author and renowned brunch queen. We hope you're ready for today's chat. Hey guys, so today I'm going to do something a little bit different and we're going to do a little bit of a talk and we're going to be talking two best friends to one another. We're going to do this as an ongoing thing because we want to share our knowledge and also what we talk about in everyday life. I'm super excited for this segment because I think especially on social media now, everyone is showing the best self, the polished self and we just want to keep it real and tell you how we feel day to day and, you know, it's, it changes. And I met Lara at the gym about, was it a year ago? Yeah. Oh, maybe a bit longer. I reckon about two years. 2018. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, who is this fit bitch? I need to get to know her. Good. <laughs> and since then, and we've become really close. You know, we've got really similar interests. We share similar values as well. And I think it's what's, you know, kept us closer and, yeah. <laughs> We talk. Yeah, who you surround yourself with is so important. And that's something I've learned over the years is, you know, who are the five people you'd surround yourself with? And I've been thinking about this lately and Lara would be one of them because we have the similar values, the similar goals. We keep each other accountable. And that's what we're going to use these talks to, I guess, educate you all on as well. A hundred percent. So just jumping straight in, we are going to talk about um, eating disorders today because we think it is a really big topic in the society and it go, does go untouched. Like a lot of people don't like talking about it. You know, me and Steph have gone through our own um, self like eating problems as well. You know, me through competing, binge eating. Steph has got her own problems, as, um, troubles as well, which she's grown out of. And, you know, just going out of it and wanting to share it with you guys. We really want to see, bring this issue to the light. And I think it's really important because a lot of girls do struggle with this. And I think it's really important to talk about, to let you guys know that you are not alone. Absolutely. And it's more common than you think, you know, one in four people will experience a mental health issue. And amongst that is eating disorders and eating disturbance, which is a term I came up with because I believe that eating disorders or eating disturbance happens along a spectrum. And just because you may not be bulimic or anorexic, it doesn't mean that eating and food and exercise doesn't consume your life on a day-to-day -day basis. hundred percent. Like even when I was in comp prep as well, like, you know, being, living my life from meal to meal and being obsessed with what I was eating and, you know, looking a certain way, it did take effect and it was an eating disorder in a way because you're just so obsessed with what you're eating and you need to weigh every gram you need to do this and that and even when I finished comp as well you know I was still in that rut I was still weighing every meal I was so obsessed with how I looked as well and I think you know competition prep and especially in my industry it goes on a lot you know girls are afraid to eat this afraid to eat that they often you know shy away from normal life that they you know that they become you know complacent with their life and they don't want to you know live out and you know become a social butterfly because they're scared that it will ruin their goals and reputation yeah and you know lara i'm going to be totally deep and unhinged here and, and ask you <laughs> throughout your comp prep did you ever you know border that line of healthy eating versus disordered eating and, and where was that line and how did you know if you had crossed it? Look, you know, I think it was very difficult. Competition prep is very difficult. You're very, you know, you've got in this, in your mind, a certain weight that you need to reach, a certain look that you need to look. And, you know, now that I look back on it, the first few comp preps I did was very obsessive. I know that, you know, it did look like I did have an eating disorder because I would not go outside my meal plan. I would have to weigh every meal if I didn't have a meal on me or you know if it was unplanned I just totally freaked out you know going from comp to comp and learning a lot more about myself now when I comp prep I'm a lot more flexible you know you do learn a lot about yourself too but I think back then I did you know struggle a lot with being very obsessive with my meals by having every meal you know on time and it did become obsessive and it did like stuff with my brain, you know, even after it coming out of comp prep, I struggled to get to everyday life. You know, I had, like, I got really bad anxiety when I got thrown out of, you know, my routine as well. But now when I get thrown out of routine, I'm like, yeah, whatever, like I'll have some chocolate, I'll have some chips, I'll have some veggies, everything like that. 
Um, yeah, but Steph, obviously when in, in your role and in your job as well, you see a lot of this day to day life and you have gone through, you know, your own struggles and that's what's kind of got you to where you are today. You know, you love to specialize in this with a lot of individuals and especially in your work. Like, you know, you've come a very long way. And I want to know, you know, how did you start and what's gotten you into this? Because it is a really big issue and you do see it a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, and on that note, you know, well done on your comp prep, like, as you said, you come out of it and a lot of people go the other way and you've sort of managed to maintain a healthy life. So well done. Um, my story is sort of, I sort of had this dream of competing, but I never did it, but I don't know why I was always fascinated with, with bodybuilders. And from a young age, I wanted to, to either be a model or a singer or a dancer that worked out as you can tell. But I, um, was actually told, I did a photo shoot one day and it started when a man, who was photographing me said I looked bloated and that I shouldn't eat bread. And from that day I cut bread. I wanted to lose all this way. And I started strictly dieting when I was in high school. Yeah. And that is how it starts. Diets obviously are a form of restriction. And then that restriction, I, I couldn't do it anymore. I would feel guilty if I deviated from a diet and then that guilt would lead me to binge because I had these beliefs, oh, I've screwed up because I broke a dietary rule. What's yep. the point? I might as well binge. And then that binge, like you said, causes anxiety, makes you freak out. Then that binge would lead me back to a new diet plan or a yeah. new exercise regime. And then the res restriction would start and that cycle would but continue. Just touching on that as well, you said that, you know, you were quite restrictive. Do you think that's what led you to your binges? You being that restrictive from day to day life? Cause I know that's what definitely led me to my binges, you know, being so restrictive in my comp prep. And then all of a sudden I get to see all this food. And then all of a sudden I didn't know what to do that. I totally binged out on all this food. Yeah, absolutely. Because what, what happens is two things when you restrict number one, psychologically, you want what you can't have. Yeah. And number two, your body isn't designed to lose weight. It's designed to do the opposite, to store fat. So when you're trying to lose weight, you're going against your body, against your biology. And when you're restricting, mm. your brain is designed to survive, not to thrive. And that's why I guess comp prep is so hard because your brain might be telling you one thing, but you know consciously yeah. you should be doing another thing. And that restriction, A, physically your body is like, oh my gosh, when am I ever going to see sugar again or a carb again? And then your body, you feel depleted, you feel tired. So the minute your brain sees a quick energy source, such as sugar, um, you know, starchy carbs, bread, rice, whatever it is, and you have that taste, your brain's like, I need to get as much as this as I can because I don't know when you're going to starve me again. And it's your biological brain taking over. And this is why girls feel so guilty. And they think, I just need more willpower. I just need to have more mental stamina. It's not. It's a biological response to starving yourself. And that's why binge eating is associated with a feeling of loss of control because you have no control. It's so true. And even, you know, when you eat those foods, you become addicted to them. Like people don't think that sugar is addictive. Sugar is addictive and it is, you know, Everyone craves it too. So it makes it even harder when you do cut it out and when you do introduce it all the time and are restrictive on it, you just crave it even more. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed, you know, you have such a good relationship with food. You, ha you have cookies, you have pizza, you have everything. Yeah. But I guess, wh where do you draw the line between, okay, you know, I'm, I'm a, a fitness uh, influencer, but I just want to be a normal human. And with the pressures, you know, you've got sponsors and all that. How do you find the line between, oh my gosh, am I eating too much or am I okay? What's happening? I think you just have to introduce that balance into your life. So, you know, having like certain things that you can have every now and then, not labeling foods as good or as bad as what I learned from you, you know, yeah. doing that in everyday life, it's so important. And to not restrict yourself, I think that's even more important as well. You know, allowing, you, allowing those meals and allowing those foods, I think is super important. You know, distinguishing foods, which you can have sometimes, I like to call it a sometimes food now, instead of a good yes. or bad food, which is what something you like. I've learned a lot of you, especially from our walks, everything like that. I think it's super important yeah. to do that. And you know, it is hard, but I think the willpower is what's going to make it happen or what's not going to make it happen. You know, you need to wake up with a goal. That's what always helps me waking up with a goal in my head, waking up, you know, I'm going to do this, this and this today. I think that's always 
makes me who I am and helps me eat the way I do eat and be, you know, cautious of what I do eat. But at the same time, I do allow myself that balance. You know, I do have that off switch as well as my on switch. And I think that's super important. And I think a lot of people do struggle with that on and off switch too. Yes, exactly. And I think the on and off switch, it, it can work two ways. I think a lot of people, they're either 100% clean, 100% dieting, or they think I'm being bad today. And when they're eating a bad food, they're bad and everything's bad. But what you've done is amazing. Like, as you said, you words are your world. And you, I call this in my book, I call this food language. And your food language is so important. And calling it sometimes food is so much more cognitively flexible. And I guess relieving than saying good or bad because no one can be good or, or bad you know one or time or another so calling it a sometimes food i think is a really great tool and it all starts with your language it's not about your behavior but about what you say in your mind 100 percent. and for those who don't know steph is releasing a book as well did you want to give us a little bit of an insight into that super proud she's killing it <laughs> but even from yes. She's talking about her own experiences and, you know, what really caught my eye is that a lot of people don't want to talk about this topic, but, you know, mm. she brings it to light and I think it becomes relatable to a lot of young women, especially. And, you know, it's really inspiring to see that you come out and you share your problems and, you know, you know that we're not alone, that people do suffer from this. You know, I get so many clients saying, you know, they struggle with this, they struggle with that because they think they're alone. But in all honesty, you're not alone. Most of my clients and most people do go through these, you know, eating phases, everything like that. And for you to come out and do that, I think it's amazing, number one. But number two, do you want to give us some more information on that too? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And do you know what? It took me a long time time so I struggled with my eating disorder throughout my uni degree and all this time I was thinking you know I'm supposed to be a psychologist I need to have my my shit together and that's what stopped me from getting help for so long but what I've realized now is it, people relate to you and when you've been through something you can this that's why I think my work with my clients is so valuable because I've been through it so I've written this book it's taken years over you know seven years experience 10 years clinical practice it's called Food Jail and it's very different to a modern self-help book. So when you pick up a self-help book, you know, it's like overcoming bulimia. You know, you don't want to carry that around with you. Carry it around with you and be like, everyone's like, what? <laughs> I know. So I've, I've, I've made it really um, smart in the way I've done it. So I've made it, you know, a pocket-sized book. It does not look like a self-help book. It's a four-part book. So it starts with my journey. It's quite dark. It's quite deep. It's quite disturbing. Then um, it goes into education. So what is eating disturbance? What is an eating disorder? The signs and symptoms, how to recognize it. And then part three and part four are the self-help part. So what I teach you is how to use your mind cognitively yep. to overcome the thoughts and the, the barriers because 80% of an eating disorder happens up here. Yeah. The 20% is the, the behavior, the binging, the restricting, the social avoidance. And that's part four of the book. And Pre-sale is out now. So if you want to order it, there is $20 off. It's on my website, mindfoodsdeaf.com. And it's, it's a great book. It's a bit funny. Yeah. I try to be a bit funny. That brings us to the end of part one. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you tune in for part two next week, where we talk about the tips and tricks for overcoming eating concerns, eating disturbance, and other food-related problems. Have a great day, guys.